Welcome back after the break. Um, I'm going to do the translation and maybe the translation will help us see which pillar we're talking about. So, um, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. O you who believe, fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you, that you may learn self-restraint. So, that was the um, Surah Al-Baqarah verse 183 translation in English. And um, we're just going to go over to Nawal and Mansoor in a little while. And uh, we're going to see what they've got in store for us. So, did you guess what um, pillar we were doing? Well, it's Ramadan. We're going to do Ramadan today. And uh, we've got a lot of fun packed in store for you today. So, st stay with us and uh, let's go over to Nawal and Mansoor. This is the sermon of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about Ramadan. Suleiman radiallahu anhu reports, on the last day of Shaban, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam addressed us and said, O oh people, there comes over you now a great month, a most blessed month, in which lies a night more greater in virtue than a thousand months. In it is in this month in which Allah has made fasting compulsory by day and has made sunnah the tarawih by night. Whoever intends to draw near to Allah by performing any virtue deed of such person shall be the reward like the one who had performed a fara'id in any other time and whoever performs a fard shall be blessed with the reward of 70 fara'id in any other time. This is indeed the month of patience and the reward of true patience is Jannah, paradise. It is the month of sympathy with one's fellow men. It is the month wherein a true believer's risk is increased. Whoever feeds another but true believer who fasted in order to break the fast at sunset for the feeder there shall be forgiveness of sins and re rescue from the fire of Jahannam, hell. And from such feeder shall be the same reward as the one who fasted he who fed without the person reward being decreased in the least. Thereupon we say, O Messenger of Allah, not all of us proceed the means whereby we can give a fasting person to break his fast. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, Allah grants the same reward to the one who gives a fasting person to break the fast, a mere date or a drink of water or a sip of milk. This is the month, the first of which brings Allah's mercy, the middle of which brings his forgiveness and the last of which brings rescue from the fire of Jahannam. Whoever lessens the burden of his servant in the month Allah will forgive him and free him from the fire of Jahannam. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, In this month, four things you should continue to, to perform in great number, two of which shall be to please your Lord, while the other two shall be to please your Lord, or that you should recite the kalima tayyiba, la ilaha illallah, and make much astaghfar, beg Allah's forgiveness with astaghfirullah, and as for those without, which you cannot live. You should beg of Allah entrance into paradise 
an ash refuge in him from hell and who and whoever gave a person who fasted water to drink Allah shall grant that person to drink from my fountain such a drink whereafter that person shall never again feel thirsty until he enters Jannah. Reported by Ibn Khuzayma in his Sahih. Okay. I know it's not exactly Ramadan yet, but um well, it's not yet. It will be coming up very shortly. So let's see how the kids then are preparing for that. Later on, we'll be going back to the kids then to see that shortly. But I would just like to say, in Ramadan is a very sacred month. It's a very holy month. And there's a lot to learn from that. And I will be telling you guys more. So let's go to the kids then to see what they're preparing for. What are you doing? I'm reading. What does it look like I'm doing, you numpty? Don't call me a numpty. I can see that you're reading. I mean, all day I've seen you just reading and reading and praying. Well, we are actually both fasting. Probably you probably noticed that we haven't eaten or drank the whole day. Mm -hmm. And we're fasting because we're practicing for Ramadan. What's Ramadan? Samala, it's the fourth pillar of Islam. You should know that by now. And it's a very blessed month. And Ramadan is the fourth pillar of Islam. Yeah, that's right, and you should definitely know that by now, Hisam Allah. Stuff for Allah. But you know what they say, everyone learns something new every day, and that could be your new thing for today. <laughs> but um, it is the month where we fast, and we want to practice for Ramadan, so we're all ready to go for it. So that's I why we're fasting today. I don't think I can fast for a whole month. Don't be so silly. We don't fast for 30 days straight. Anyone would know that. What we do is we eat something before sunrise and then we don't eat anything or drink anything until sunset after Maghrib namaz and then we can eat as much as we want, really. Can you imagine what it's like not to eat for the whole day? No. Not at all. Yeah. But Well, what's the point of staying hungry all day? The point is that First of all, it's the fourth pillar of Ramadan, and secondly, what it does, it makes us realise how lucky we are, how Allah SWT has blessed us, because if you think about it, we get food all the time, and we don't really take it as um, um, really a blessing, or, you know, we just think, take it for granted, and you know, there are people in this world that don't get food, they literally have to kind of fast, but they're forced to do it, because they don't have food, and they can't eat, and it... Uh, it makes us realise how lucky we are and um, but that's really why we fast most of the time. Yeah and fasting isn't just about not eating, it's a time where we can keep control of ourselves and um, keeping control of our actions that we do, stay good, being kind yeah. to people and so it helps us keep in control. Sounds like hard work. Well I'm not going to lie, it is hard work, you know, staying hungry, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides us with the willpower to not eat and control ourselves. And, oh, I've also got to say, it has so much reward. And did you know that the shaitan is locked up in chains during the, this special month? No way. I know, and it's amazing. And basically, it gives us the opportunity to um, kind of, it gives us the opportunity to kind of, good in our like bad habits to get rid of them you know say if we have a bad habit because shaitan doesn't have the power he can't influence us to do the bad things and if we do any bad things during Ramadan it's purely because of ourselves and not shaitan's influence um, and because shaitan is locked up in chains it is so much easier for us to get rid of bad habits if we have any bad habits that we want to get rid of we should try to do it all the time but Ramadan is the best time to do it but, um, shall I tell you what I had for Sahur this morning? Yeah. I had toast and ande. <laughs> but, uh, what did you have, Renisa? I had omelette and toast. Yeah. And my mum had plant and egg, and my sisters had dates and milk. I cannot have dates, I don't like them. But they are actually, you know, Prophet Muhammad used to have dates and milk for um, Ramadan, and it's very healthy for us, although, you know, we, we, 
and all the time to try and eat dates because it's very good of us for us and so I'd, we haven't mentioned about the health benefits uh, health benefits of Ramadan what health benefits oh you're such a cutie <laughs> Munna, don't you call don't me know that what health benefits are it doesn't matter Teddy bear. Yeah. Munna, it doesn't matter but I'll tell you <laughs> basically We've spent most of it eating and snacking and sleeping, it's true. Snacking and, and eating you know, and um, So basically fasting, it gives our body a break from eating and sleeping and drinking all the time because um, what I do is definitely if we do homework, you know, and all we do is work, 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 then our bodies get, or well, our brains and bodies get really tired out and we need to give them a break. So basically that's what Ramadan kind of does in a way because we don't eat or drink as much. So um, it gives our body a chance to clean out and, you know, become prepped for the next year. So, um, oh, and also... Um, we pray. We have special prayers um, for Ramadan, and they're called Tarawees, Taraviya. And what they are is that you know we pray them at night after um, we've eaten, and we leave a couple of hours, and then we pray them. But um, they are also, you could say, they help you because what they do is because you like get up a lot if you're healthy, and you go up and down obviously when you're doing sajda and things. But because um, there's quite a lot of them, what, they kind of. In a way, they kind of help you burn up everything that you've eaten. So, as well as having spiritual benefits, like it makes us realise how um, lucky we are, it also gives us physical benefits and keeps us healthier, I suppose. Yep, you're definitely right there, Maharaj. So, the month of Ramadan is a very, very sacred month. And it's the most important month within the Islamic calendar. In this month, all the devils are chained up. So, like Maharaj was saying there, we can't, like... Well, there's no one to tell us to do bad things. There's, uh, so you can keep it up and you can do good things in Ramadan. That's the whole point of Ramadan. And we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything we want. And Ramadan does help us in, like, in a physical sense. It, like, say if we're a bit obese, it uh, reduces our obesity because we're not eating as much as we're eating usually. And uh, it's a really good thing to do to fast a month and uh, the prophet said when the month of Ramadan begins the gates of paradise are opened the gates of hell are closed and the devils are chained so this shows us that the gates of hell are closed so there's no bad things to do we should always do good things in Ramadan and we should always do good things anyway but we should take more care while we're doing Ramadan and while we're fasting so um, also, our Prophet said, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, having faith in Allah and expecting reward from him, all his previous sins will be forgiven. So all the previous sins will be forgiven. This shows us how important the month is. So all of our bad sins will be forgiven if we fast with our full heart, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we fast the whole month, expecting reward, our sins will be forgiven. That shows us how important this month is. Wow! So we're going to be going back to the kids then to see let to see what they're up to. Now, what are you doing? Well, we're getting ready for iftar because it's nearly our time to open our fast, um, and it's nearly sunset, which means it's nearly Maghrib time, and then that's when iftar is. And um, we're just really getting ready for it. Renisa has been baking a cake for yeah. me. Yeah. And that's just... <laughs> Not just for you. Shush. That's just in the oven right now. So we'll, hopefully it'll be baked in time for iftar. And um, yeah, so we've got loads of food here. And uh, we've tried to be healthy, but it was, this was really all we could find in our cabinets. But um, <laughs> after all, iftar, you know, after we've fasted for a long time, long hard day we should eat we should put good food into our systems not just any old rubbish really and you know the best um, way to open our fast is like we said before with dates and milk that's how our holy prophet Muhammad used to do it and um, I know some people don't really like dates I didn't use I never used to like them when I was younger but my mum forced me to eat them no seriously now I've gotten into a habit of eating them because after all it's a sunnah and why not do it if we can I'm not yeah. allergic to them or anything so I'm gonna force you to eat a date today and see how you like it um, <laughs> okay <laughs> and we have and um, 
when we do a fair, um, obviously this is just a practice, Hisamullah, but hopefully me and Manisa are planning to um, have one day of fair where we call all our neighbours round and have a fair together because we're a bit away yeah. than to do yeah. it over Ramadan and catch up on old friends and things like that. And you that. get a lot of reward as well. Yeah, and you get loads of reward feeding other people as well as well as yourself. So, you know, it's kind of killing two birds in one stone where you catch up with all your mates and you also get loads of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, but we do get a lot of reward by fasting and iftari, but we have to we have to remember that it's not just all about the food. And during the day today, rather than just thinking about all, what food we're going to have afterwards, um, we tried, which a lot of us do. I I still do it sometimes. You know, oh, so hungry, I've got like two hours left, or one hour <laughs> left, really. And oh, mum, what are you having? What are you making for iftari? Oh, I don't want to eat that. I don't like that. But you know, rather than doing that all the time. Um, what we try to do, because we kind of, we made a plan before, um, obviously before Ramadan, because we're practicing, we want to yeah. make it the best it can be. So um, what we did was we kind of bullet pointed things that we would try not to do and we would try to do. And one of the things that we would try not to do is to moan and complain about how hungry we are, because there's no point in doing that. At the end of the day, we have to fast, so there's no point yeah. complaining about it. It'll just mm -hmm. make your day longer and heavier. And... Um, but one thing that we did plan on actually, what we did plan on actually doing is um, praying to Allah a bit more during Ramadan because we get more reward by doing like easy things like reading the Quran, maybe praying, praying every, of course like all our five daily prayers, but pray, um, doing nafal or reading tasbih or you know uh, helping maybe helping a little brother learn the Quran or something like that. We've we try we're trying to do good yeah. deeds for Ramadan, but. Um, I think it's I think it's time to open up us nearly. So um I'm just we've just put out the food now. But um and let me check the time. Yeah, I think it's time to open our fashion so let's do yeah. it. <laughs> okay. You know the dua that we just read, is before you open your fast should always be the dua and when you have kinders, they have the door on there, so make sure you learn that. Yeah, definitely. Anyway. No. <laughs> mm, that water was nice after ages, but um, now that we've opened our fast, Renita, before we eat all our food and before we eat the lovely cake, I think we should go read Maghrib Namaz first. After all, you know, we don't want to rush that, so we can always eat yeah. later, but the Maghrib time we'll get. So we'll go and read our Namaz then. Are you coming, Isamala? Yeah. Okay then. Wow, they're definitely right. And while w they were talking, I could feel it. I could feel like how it feels to fast in Ramadan. So if you can like tell us how you feel while you're fasting, you can ring in and shortly we'll be opening our telephone lines. But now it's time for a break. And alhamdulillah, we will be looking forward to seeing you after the break. <laughs> Thank you. 